Well, hey everyone, this is James from Mad River Homestead and uh, doing a little bit of a different kind of video today. Uh, just wanted to kind of catch up on some things that have happened over the last few weeks here at the Mad River Homestead. And, uh, you know, we absolutely love this lifestyle that we decided to embark on. Um, I'm 60 years old and my wife is 61. And of course there's that, you know, wish that we had started it uh, years ago, but here we are. And uh, we've done a lot in the, you know, the few years, well, it'll be, it's about two and a half years now. We, we moved out here in October of 21. And we've done a lot since we moved here. You know, we started right in with chickens. That's the, uh, the what, what do they call it? The, um, the breakthrough drug, no. Um, the threshold drug, I don't know. It's some kind of drug. But um, that's what we started with, was uh, chickens, laying hens. And um, since then we've done, uh, I think the next thing we did was uh, the, the, either the meat chickens or uh, the, the hogs. And uh, we did that that first year we were here and um, both went pretty successful. The hogs we didn't have as long as we'd have liked to have them. Uh, they were uh, about four and a half months that we had them. So they were probably about six months old. So they didn't get as big as we wanted to, but uh, provided quite a bit of meat for me and Margie. And we were able to sell one to a friend so that helped defray our costs. Um, and we're on our third set of meat chickens now. So uh, we're pretty excited about that. Get, get to fill our freezer, look back up a little bit uh, towards the middle of May. Um, we've got goats, we got the dairy goats last year. And um, of course we got our cats. Hey kitty cat. But um, when a few weeks ago, we were about three and a, we're, it was about three and a half, four weeks ago. We were about a, a week, we thought, before our uh, kids would get born and uh, from our dairy goats. So mama was in full labor or full pregnancy. And uh, I'm not gonna really edit this by the way. So you might have to hear my mistakes when I'm going through this. I'm doing, not doing it from a script or anything. But, uh, she was a few days before um, giving birth and we started really thinking about, you know, predators. Like we've never had a problem with predators really to speak of here. We hear coyotes out in the fields around us, but even with, with our pigs when they were little, they were way, we built my, my uh, hog pen back in the back of our woods for obvious reasons, right? But um, even with them, didn't have any problems with anything coming up into the property. Um, so we'd never really worried about it. The chicken coop that I built and the chicken run, the first one was a little bit, you know, um, something could have gotten in there. I did have electric around it, but, um, but you know, with the new one I built, weren't worried about them at all, but we started really thinking about it when we were expecting kids. We should have thought about it sooner, but we didn't. And that was a livestock guardian dog. We, we decided we really needed something that could watch our livestock and guard against any bigger predators that might come around. So we went to the local Humane Society because I went on their website and they had a Pyrenees. And she wasn't a, a big Pyrenees, she was a good size. Um, and so we went and Margie immediately fell in love with her because Margie cares about anything else that's hurting. And uh, so you could tell the dog was really scared. Um, we don't know if it had been abused or at, at the very least it had been neglected quite a bit. It was only about two years old. So um, we ended up bringing her home and we took her out in the woods um, walked around the property several times for about 40, 45 minutes. Let her off the leash. She uh, she trotted along and 
she she would try to stay away from us um but eventually she let Margie come back over to her. We got her back on the leash and it was a super cold day. It was like 25 degrees and we were freezing. So we had fixed up a spot in the little hay barn that I, that I built. And um, we took her, took her in there. Um, she laid right down. We had some food and water for her there. She laid right down. She looked so contented, you know, and in our mind, we, we thought, well, she's gonna be fine. Um, so we decided to go inside and warm up a little bit. Close the barn doors, uh, which is just, you know, sliding doors. Um, about 45 minutes later, I look out the window and she had sure enough pushed the barn door open and she was out in the middle of the woods. So. I thought, you know, let her walk around a little bit, but then I saw her start heading towards the back of the property. So threw my boots on, took off running. By the time I got to her, she, well, I was still probably a good 100, 120 feet away. She was trying to get over the fence and, um, and she eventually did get over the fence before I could get to her. So now she's out in this field. I crossed the fence and she had taken off running and she looked back at me once and then kept running. And so we jump in our cars, went down a side road. We could see her on the edge of these woods, went around another side road cause she ducked into the woods, went down, we didn't see her. And um, so I told my wife, I said, I'm gonna head back towards the house just in case she comes back. So I come around and, and I thought she was gonna follow me. Um, she comes back or I come back and I get to a, a four way stop and she wasn't behind me. So the U-turn went back and sure enough, the dog had come out, had crossed the little side road we were on and was going across another field. And Margie was out in that field. Um, I went around that block of, um, of uh, property to see if I could be on the other side of it if she came back out there. Um, long story short, we, Margie got pretty close to her, but she took off again. I never saw her on the other side. So we finally we went back to the house. We called the Humane Society. They brought out a live trap, which the only thing I ever caught in that was a feral cat. Um, looked like a bobcat. It kind of scared me a little bit, <laughs> but, uh, the only other time we saw her was through our woods across a field, probably about half a mile away. I saw her at one point, she was, looked like she was coming this way, but she never showed up. So we of course felt terrible. Um, we know we should have done a little more research, you know, found out in advance how Pyrenees in general, they do have their property that they'll protect, but they're always trying to expand that property. Um, and particularly coupled with the fact that she had been probably mistreated or at the very least neglected and didn't trust humans probably too much. So we felt terrible, you know? I mean, but what, what could we do? We, you know, drove around a lot over the next few days just looking for her. And we've never seen her since. Um, so, Back to the goats, we uh, we started seeing more signs that Lily was gonna be giving birth pretty soon. Um, the day before she gave birth, some really good friends of ours um, sent me a little video and it was some uh, puppies. Their Marima sheepdog had, uh, had 10 puppies. Um, and it was funny cause Margie and I had just talked about, you know, what we went through, okay, we'll never try that again. Back to, I mean, we really do need some kind of guardian dog. And we had just talked about, you know, if we decide to try this again, we have to get a puppy because, you know, that's going to grow up here. It's going to know that this, this is its property. And then we get the video of the puppies and I showed her to Margie. She said, we're getting one. So, um, we, you know, started looking more at Marimas and, uh, come to find out that one of the, 
differences between Maremmas and Pyrenees. Pyrenees are more uh, territorial oriented. In other words, they'll protect their whole territory where Maremma dogs are more um, livestock oriented. Okay, so they're really, or you can actually put a Maremma into the goat pen and let them live there with the goats. Uh, they'll protect anything, any smaller creature, the chickens, the goats. Uh, if we have pigs, they're gonna be out there making sure that you know nothing's coming around there. They patrol all night and um, you know, so we really felt comfortable about making that decision. So we're pretty excited. Um, we've, uh, we already went out, picked out ours. Um, she's absolutely adorable. Of course, she's a little puppy, but they're always pretty even when they get bigger. So, um, and the parents of this one are absolutely gorgeous. The dad is huge. His, his paws are about as big as my hand right here. That's about how big his paws are, absolutely huge. The mama is smaller, so we're hoping we land somewhere in between. Uh, but we're pretty excited, so of course we'll have videos of that coming up and everything. Um, so, you know, and then, you know, a day or two after we get the video of the puppies, then we have new goats. And uh, we're absolutely ecstatic. I mean, everything went absolutely perfect no problems with the birth. In fact, one of them was on the ground before we even knew. I was just going out to check on Lily and I I walked around the pen so I could see into the shed because I knew she was in there. And sure enough, I see one laying on the ground. So I run back up to the house, told Margie, I said, get, your, get the stuff, the kit. Um, we got one on the ground already. And uh, so that was the little girl, she was born first and the uh, little boy wasn't too far behind her. Um, so that was really exciting, new kids. And I'll tell you, it's absolutely so much fun to watch them develop and grow and um, get more active as, as, with every day. So um, last week, um, well, actually, Wednesday, two weeks ago, um, we went back over to the same friends that we were getting the Marema from. We also bought our dairy goats from them, uh, Ezra and Lily. Um, and we're pretty much keeping them in business, I think, right now. Love them to death, though, so it's, it's a great arrangement. But uh, anyway, so we had decided we wanted to get meat goats next. And um, we've eaten some of their goat meat, absolutely loved it. And so we decided we wanted to get meat goats. And so we went, I went over Wednesday, two weeks ago, two weeks from tomorrow, and, um, and got our male, our buck. He's, uh, his name is, I call him G. It's Gustav, but I call him G. So when I go out there, I can say, what up G? I thought that was kind of funny, but um, anyway, I bring him home, no problems. He's 75% Boer and 25% uh, uh, Nubian. And then I found someone that had a full uh, Boer doe, uh, it's about six months old, and they're about 15 minutes away from us. So I made arrangements to go uh, pick up that um, goat on Saturday, the following Saturday, so about a week and a half ago. So I get over there, I get her, and um, you know, of course she's agitated. She's in the back of a truck in a big, huge dog cage. I get her home and um, you know, I just opened the gate and kind of fed her from my hand and she eventually kind of calmed down. And uh, I had her in the front driveway. So eventually I take the, the cage out. I, you know, set it on the ground. I reached in, no, I had already put the leash on her. So I grabbed the leash, opened the door. She comes walking out and immediately she bolted. And this, this was really tough. She was pulling so hard on that leash that um, she broke one of her horns. And I don't know if you've ever seen that, but it is really, really traumatic. It, there was blood everywhere and um, she broke the horn. And before I could get to her, she slipped out of the leash and took off running, ran uh, through our front woods out towards the road 
um, trying to shorten this up a little bit for you. Someone driving by that was a, one of our neighbor's uh, sister, she saw what was going on. Um, you know, I'm cutting out a lot, but eventually she and I were able, the goat, um, her name is yet to be determined by the way, but she ran across the road and fortunately she went into um, a gated property. The gate was open, uh, fence property, I should say, their gate was open and we were able to get her between a building and the fence. Um, the lady's mom had uh, pulled up behind her. They had their cars right in the road just to keep traffic slowed down. Um, and she actually pulled the, her car up into the driveway and let me get in with this goat, blood everywhere and everything, and brought us back over to our house. So I put her in the cage, um, back in the truck, and she stood for quite a while. Finally, she started laying down. Um, she was eating, you know, so that was good. But um, I, and meanwhile, I went out and fixed up an area in the goat pen where she could be segregated. I, you know, wasn't sure, you know, with the head butting and stuff that goats do. And with Lily being a new mom, I wasn't sure how exactly things were gonna go if I put her, just put her in the pen. So we get her in there. Um, she was, of course, was scared, but the blood had really started to clot very well. And uh, so I was feeling good about that. Um, so get her in this little enclosure that I had made and she, she did eat a little bit. I put a little hay in there. She was eating that. And uh, so we were feeling, you know, okay, you know, at least we'll get her to when someone could come look at her. And uh, so that evening we go back out after dark and she, okay, kitty cat, you got me with the claw there. Um, but there was fresh blood. And so I get some corn starch, I shake it on it and that seemed to help a lot. And, um, so the next morning, of course, we're not sure what's going to happen, you know, with the inexperience, you know, we're going to come out and she's not living still. So I come out the next morning and, um, she seemed to be okay. She was, you know, obviously she was in pain. Um, I, Margie had done a lot of reading. I had done some reading, uh, researching. And so I went and got some of the, it's called vet wrap, but it's that bandage stuff that you can wrap and it kind of sticks to itself. And um, we were able to get in there and get her head wrapped up really good to get that horn kind of bound down and to hopefully stop the bleeding. We put some Neosporin on a gauze pad and put that on there. Uh, so I was able to get a hold of a vet that day, but he wasn't able to come out until Monday. And uh, Monday, it, it was a little bit later in the day, about four o'clock, he came out and man, he handled things. He got right in there, got her between his legs, cut the bandage uh, off, said it looked great. It was good that we had done what we had done. Um, he took the horn and it was moving a little bit. So he just snipped it the rest of the way off um, and then gave her uh, an ejection for pain and uh, told her, told us we could go ahead and let her in with the other goats. And uh, so we did that within a half hour. She seemed totally different, uh, probably because of the pain medication. She wasn't feeling any pain finally. And uh, she went, she started eating and uh, every day she's just been doing better and better and better. We did find out that the, uh, the horn, it'll grow back, but it won't be as, um, as you know, big as the other one. It won't look exactly the same. So that's okay. Um, as long as she's healthy, right? Um, so, you know, there again, you know, you live and learn, but there's so many resources out there. And I would just encourage anybody to, you know, before you get any kind of animal, really try to learn and, you know, there's different things. Like, for instance, with the leash thing, I should have asked the guy, has she ever been on a leash? That would have been a simple question. Um, all the other goats that we've um, had that we've had dealings with, they had been on leashes. So yeah, they pull against it a little bit, but um, you know, just a little pressure, and they'll they'll go with us. She'd never been on a leash, and um, you know, so in retrospect, I should have driven the truck back in the back, 
and um, open the gate and just put her in with the other goats and things would have been fine. Um, but I'm, we're just glad that she's healthy and that she's doing well. So um, I think that was pretty much what I wanted to say on this video. Uh, just, just to kind of talk about, you know, when you, when you are doing this kind of thing, you're going to have times where things don't go exactly the right way. Um, you just have to know that it could happen. I, um, I've heard it said, and, uh, it's, it's true that when you have livestock, eventually you're going to have dead stock. We've been very fortunate. We've, um, with our chickens, we lost one, uh, in the first week after I built the coop for them, um, very likely a hawk came down and got it. They were they were pretty young. They were like three months old at that point, if that. Not even that. Probably about two months old. And um, but since then we've never lost any livestock except for one little chick, uh, where the mama got a little bit too bold and had her out in the open before she should have probably. Um, but you know, very, very minor things. Uh, of course, you know, raising meat chickens, uh, there's usually about a 10 to 15% attrition rate with those. Um, so you just kind of expect that. Um, but do the research, you know, find out about these animals, uh, before you get them, you know, find out what kind of enclosures they need. Um, you know, I, I felt like I was pretty well prepared with all the uh, buildings that I've done, the, you know, the goat pens, uh, things like that. But when it came to the actual animal, maybe we should have spent a little bit more time up front. And, uh, but we'll know for next time, right? Um, so anyway, I just, I guess I just want to talk about that. You know, yeah, with, with some uh, traumatic things, you know, losing the dog, um, breaking the horn on the goat. Um, along with that, we have new life. And it's absolutely a beautiful thing being a part of this uh, community. So we really enjoy it. I hope you enjoy the videos that I do. Um, they're not professional <laughs> videos. Uh, I edit them on my iPhone. I don't know how many people do that. I know some of these channels I watch, I enjoy them, but I can tell they have, uh, if not professional equipment, really high grade equipment, and that's great. Um, I'm not trying to make money off of YouTube. My goal is just to share some things. Um, you know, if I build something, show you how I did it, you know, maybe you get an idea of how to do yours that way. Uh, maybe you get an idea of what it's like to kind of live this life. And, um, you know, that's, that's my goal. You know, you're never going to see me with, you know, some big expensive tractor and, you know, hauling hay and, uh, with a tractor and, you know, uh, scooping up my compost with a bucket. I don't have that kind of stuff. I did buy a used four wheeler that was made in 1987. Um, you know, so it's, um, about a little bit less than 40 years younger than me. Um, but you know, uh, it's, it's just something that I really enjoy and I want to share and I want to help peop other people, you know? So, um, again, a different video for me, but, uh, hopefully you enjoyed it and, uh, hopefully you gained some kind of insight from it. Um, if you did enjoy it, you know, and this is your first time here, I hope you'll, uh, go ahead and subscribe, um, hit the thumbs up button and uh, all that kind of stuff. Share it, you know, with anybody you think that might, might you know, learn something from it as well. So um, thank you so much for taking the time to sit here um, with, and, and watch this video. Uh, I appreciate it so much. And uh, until the next video, like I always say, God bless you and your family.